Welcome, friends. Welcome for the first time. Maybe welcome back to Off the Cuff with Gallivant. I am Regina DeChico, and with me is my fabulous co-host. Christine Drynan, founder of Gallivant. Oh my goodness, I love it, Christine. It doesn't get old. You can keep saying it doesn't get old. I mean, who's a founder, for crying out loud? I'm always so impressed. I'm always so impressed. It sounds so official. It does sound. That's why I have to keep saying it. I hope even in casual circumstances. That's how you introduce yourself. Oh, I mean, I'm just going to drop that wherever I can. I, I think you should. I think you should. Oh, so let's see. Oh, my God. What what should we be talking about today? Um, I think we should be talking about the 23 places to go in 2023. Gallivan has put together a list that everybody needs to know about. I don't disagree. Which is <laughs> As the founder of Gallivan, do you agree that what I've said is true? I mean, we are a travel podcast we talk food we talk restaurants but at the end of the day we do the travel right which is why i mean, which is why i want to talk to you about i picked three places on this list that i want to know why you're saying we need to go to in 2023 Oh, wow. Yes. I'm excited to like figure out which places. I know. Pick. I've been proactive and I picked a top three. And then what I found was, was like, oh, some places are close by, which I love. I love an accessible place. I love a place that's far away. I love a place that's not even on my radar. So what I saw that sparked my interest was a place I've been to many times, London. So I'm saying I've been there. I've been there so many times before. But why do I have to go back in 2023, Christine? Well, hey. We know Megan and Harry are in California now. <laughs> it's so very true. No Megan and Harry. But there's a little something this year called the coronation oh my God. of King Charles. Yes, yes. Are we invited? Is that what you're <laughs> announcing right now on the podcast? They need us. Oh my gosh. Well, Regina, they need you from the view. <laughs> I guess I should I should warm up the crowd for the coronation. Otherwise it could be very stuffy. Exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, King Charles is being coronated, which is a huge deal. Yes. Because Queen Elizabeth was on the throne for almost seven decades. This is very true. And so London has a new king, but London has more than that. London has all of these new hotels that are opening up. And when I travel around the world, I like to follow the luxury hotels. Sure. And not only does the Mandarin Oriental have one luxury hotel, in Knightsbridge, they are now opening up one in Mayfair. Wow. <clears throat> Which is like literally only five minutes away. That, are they competing with themselves? <laughs> are they crazy Mandarin Oriental? I mean, <laughs> when you're that good, yeah. you're that good. <laughs> but it's not just Mandarin Oriental. The Rosewood has their hotel, which is, you know, pretty close to Piccadilly. It kind of been, I kind of find the, the Rosewood hotel that they currently have to be in a kind of random area. It's in the center of everything, but it's not Mayfair, it's not Knightsbridge, it's kind of Piccadilly, but not. They're opening up one in Mayfair. Oh, wow. So it's not just the Mandarin Oriental. Mm -hmm. It's also Rosewood that's opening up a second hotel in the same city. Oh. And you, they joined Four Seasons, which has a couple of Four Seasons okay. in London. So essentially, you have these luxury, luxury hotels that are opening up second branches. You have new hotels of opening, like the Peninsula is going to open in London. Wow. And then you have places like the 22, which I love me, the big luxury grand international hotels. But every once in a while, there's a hotel called the, like, a, like the 22 that comes around and really surprises you. Well, I don't know anything about the 22. Well, the 22 is the place to stay because it gives you, not only because the hotel is amazing, it's run by the guys who rent lakes, which is like this beautiful, kind of like cool, quirky, eccentric, amazingly like deco like decorated hotel in London. Those same people, or at least some of the founders, came over to the 22 to run it, and they just created this hotel that is the next level of luxury, but still boutique and unique, and they have a private club, which is the place to be. Okay. And the secret is, is that as a hotel guest, you get honorary membership. Oh, then you get to be in the club. Okay, I was going to ask, how do we get in the club? Well, London is all about private clubs. It's true. Like, there's no way you're getting into into Lulu's at the at the Five H Club uh, at Fort Harrisburg, Harrisburg. But like, you are going to get into the Twenty Two if you are a guest in the hotel. That's a hot tip. Yeah. So, one of the many reasons why I love to stay there. And then on top of that, 
London is so much more than fish and chips now. You know, that's, I remember the very, I mean, the very first time I went, I was like college age, and it was like, the, the breakfast was like very intimidating. And then we like we were doing pizza. And I mean, it's so sad to think that I was a child. Please don't judge me, <laughs> listeners. But it was like, oh my god, like pizza, fries, and then just literally watching the changes, going back, going to St. John's, then being like, oh, this London has changed, and the food scene is only getting better. Yes. Though of course I still love me some fish and chips. Oh, like well, I'll still go to like the Maker Chippy, stand in yes. line and like get my fix of right. fish and chips. No one's telling us not. We're not saying don't <laughs> do that. We're saying you must do do that. But we're saying now you've got more options. I mean, so London in a nutshell, we missed it during the pandemic. Yes. And now everyone's back. If you have a chance to go there for work, tag on a couple of extra days, and all of these amazing new hotels have opened up. So it's really the place to be for I love it. I love it. They're back and they're better than ever, it sounds like. Absolutely. Okay, so now we're going to change. We're going to move. We're going to go a different direction. On the list, I saw Tokyo. Okay, speaking of a place that we missed during the pandemic, Tokyo just reopened this it, They year. just reopened now. Yeah, they just reopened in like a fashion that you would actually go there to visit. You know, not like under, you know, quarantine or whatever else the, right, the restrictions right, right, of were. Course. Like, Tokyo is back and it's better than ever. And whether or not the cherry blossoms are on your bucket list, like this is around the time of year that you can actually time your trip. And they once again have incredible hotels. And one of the places that is on my list to go visit is the Amman Hotel in Tokyo, because I'm a total Amman junkie. Oh, yeah. I love the Amman Giri, I love Amman <laughs> China, you name it. If there's an Amman, Amman New York, if there's a lot at the beginning of it, I am a huge fan, but I have not been to the Oman Tokyo yet. And so I want to go to the new fish markets. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to experience Kyoto, which I've never been to Kyoto. I've never been to Kyoto either. To go to Mount, Mount Fuji. Mm -hmm. I've seen it from the distance, but I've never been. Like I just heard there are so many cool things that are happening right now in Japan. And so I am all about going back. And on the other side of that, I'm not a big skier, but I do love the mountains. And it seems that they're starting to open some really beautiful luxury properties oh. that are not just about like bare bones skiing properties in the mountains. And so I think that Japan is, should be on the list as well as for the culture. Yes. Because they have this incredible art island in Japan that has also been on my list where they have all this crazy big art installations. And so they have it all. They have food, they have mountains, and they have culture, and they're reopened again after many years of us, us not being able to go. So Japan is definitely on the list. Oh, I love that. I love, especially when they're reopened. Oh my, that's exciting. Okay, and now, so I was I was on the socials. I was on the socials, and I saw some pictures from a place I, I've never had on my list before. I've never had on my list before, Guatemala. So I'm going to say something that may be a little unpopular, but you'll have to bear with me. I went to Mexico 26 years ago, and it was the worst trip of my life. Oh no. It happened to be my honeymoon. Uh, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had like a, a rim shot, but I'm bummed. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean there's, there's a lot to that. Yes, to it's, it's loaded. That seems like a loaded statement, but. Yes, and so I was not that excited about going to Guatemala um, because I, Proximity to Mexico. Right. I was very traumatized yes. that trip I took yes. to Mexico. And I'm sure this has happened to a lot of people. And it's like, oh, that's close to the other place. I don't know if I want that. But you work through it. Well, all because I saw this amazing hotel called Villa Boca, mm -hmm. which I also talked about when I talked about like the most romantic hotels yes. around the world. I saw this gorgeous hotel that opened up. It looked amazing from the photos. And I said, okay, Guatemala. It's time to go. I'm going to all 195 countries. Right, which I love that, by the way. I love that. And so I was like, now the time is to go to Guatemala. Yes. It's a direct flight on JetBlue, five hours from New York City, or you could fly through Miami and get there in first class on American Airlines. But this hotel drew me, but what continued to engage me was the culture, the people, the beautiful history, and the food of Guatemala. Now what, tell me a little bit about the food of Guatemala. So Guatemala is one of those places where the ingredients are so pure, pure and clean. You 
need as much salad as you want. I eat so much ceviche and so much raw fish. There's an incredible, incredible restaurant in Guatemala City called Mercado 24. Okay. Bente Cuatro. Oh, oh, oh. Mercado oh. Bente Cuatro. <laughs> we'll subtitle this episode for you. It's 24. <laughs> it's 24. And we went there and had the best tuna ceviche of my life. Not only was the tuna so fresh, but they had all of these different oils and herbs and accoutrements on the tuna that I was just blown away. Because well, best of your life, that is saying something. Yeah, that I is mean, saying something. That ceviche, I'm still dreaming of that tuna. And they had like incredible fish dishes that were grilled and you just name it, super casual place though. Like unassuming from the outside, just wooden benches, like fun, bright colors. and. You take that and then you bring that onto to Antigua de Guatemala, which was the second capital of Guatemala. Um, no longer Guatemala City now is the capital of Guatemala, but it's an old UNESCO heritage city that has these beautiful, authentic restaurants. Once again, Hugo Ceviche, amazing ceviche bars, and they have like this cool beer that they put shrimp ceviche on with all these spices oh, wow. and you you shoot the beer like with the shrimp ceviche and all the spices so they're doing cool things that are both traditional right in guatemala but they're also doing like some nouveau cuisine as well we went to this incredible restaurant called santo spirito in antigua de guatemala and that was the stunning sexy dark beautiful white couches it felt like it was like an extension of miami in a lot of ways, yeah. and they had homemade stracciatella, oh, wow. homemade focaccia. They had the pastas were off the charts, what? which you would not expect. Like a pasta would not have crossed my mind listening to you talk about Guatemala. Yeah, in Guatemala. I mean, what they're doing there at Santo Spirito is really special. And then there's even like a French restaurant called Tartine that everyone goes to. That's like super lively at night. It's great food. So primarily, it's Guatemalan. Mm -hmm which I really love focusing on sure. there. Um, I had the best tamales of my life. Guatemala is the seat of the Mayan empire. And so corn right. is king there. So anything corn you can get your hands on, I had incredible tamales. And then also like we stopped at this little roadside shack on the way to this beautiful lake that's surrounded by volcanoes called Chicoy. Mm -hmm. We had a Guatemala tradition of breakfast that's just like eggs and beans and fresh corn tortilla that you watch the Mayan woman make for you right in front of you. I mean, my mouth is watering thinking about the food in Guatemala. You pair it with Villa Boca, this incredible hotel experience. Lake Atitilan, mm -hmm. which is a lake that's in the middle of three volcanic ranges. Stunningly beautiful, one of the most beautiful places in the world. And you have yourself a destination that you should get to in 2023 before it gets spoiled and overdeveloped. Right, I feel like exactly what you're saying is like they are right there on the cutting edge, but everybody sort of doesn't really know. So now is the time to go. I also love, it's also so funny like when you go to a place and you do their cuisine, but you see how they're doing other countries' cuisines. That's always such a fun thing. And I feel like I'm always blown away when they're doing something so well. And it's like, how is this happening? Well, I mean, if you also think about it, the locals aren't gonna be like, oh, go to Guatemalan food. The locals eat Guatemalan food at home. Right. When you wanna see beautiful locals, we saw the most beautiful people of the entire country when we were at Santo Spirito. They are at like the international restaurants. Yes. It's just like us. Right, you know? exactly. No, it's so true. It's Whereas so true. Whereas like Japanese or like, you know, right. Fashion, we always like, wanna cool. mix it up. Yeah, exactly. And I, I'm honestly in my head still trying to picture this shrimp ceviche on a beer. Just so, oh. can we attach a photo to this episode? I'm, I'm sort of, I don't not, do not know what that must look like. Well, I mean, I will attach photos. I have <laughs> photos of the beer, and I also have a video of me drinking the beer with a shrimp ceviche. It was, I don't even drink beer. It was amazing, especially with all the spices. Okay, so, <laughs> so I can't wait to see that. Well, the other last thing I want to mention yes. about Guatemala, because Regina, I have a little surprise for you. Oh, is. They have incredible chocolate. And I am a bit of a chocolate snob, personally. Sure. Like, I am very particular about my chocolate. And so there are a lot of places. It's not the Caribbean because Guatemala is on the Pacific side, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of places in the Caribbean that make chocolate. And I'm not saying they're not good, but I am saying that I'm like, you know, I'm kind of a snob. 
But I'm not saying they're not good. I'm also not saying they're great. <laughs> this brand is Ix Cacao. Mm. And I would love you to try these. Oh, I would love to try these. Ooh, there's a layer. What am I looking at? There's a layer in here. There's a little surprise in there. Is it mint? Yes, it is. Oh my God, that's amazing. Okay. Is that not top-notch chocolate? Yes. I don't know how I'm getting the chocolate is so strong and so is the mint, but they're not overpowering each other. Mm -mm. Like this balance is perfect. I mean, I loved me Andy's mints when I was growing up. Yeah. This is like Andy's mints, the Michelin level. No, it's true. This is the elevated Andy's. There's a flavor profile on the Andy's mints should, you know, that it, that exists for a reason, but this is taking it to the neck. This is EMP Andy's mints. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there you go, Guatemala. Oh my God, this is fantastic. Well, listen, we have some chocolate to finish, so we're gonna have to say goodbye. <laughs> we have to end this episode, because Christine and I have to finish this chocolate bar. It could melt, it would not be fair. <laughs> we can't let it go to waste. But oh my God, so, I mean, this is another fantastic conversation we've had, just about, I mean, life, food, travel, all that good stuff. I love the way you break a place down into exactly what I, why I wanna go to a place. Regina, you need to get on an airplane. I do, I do. <laughs> I take my carry-on chocolate. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Oh my goodness. Well, thank you everybody to come coming to another episode of Off the Cup with Galamant. And listen, every month there's gonna be another episode at the beginning of every month. So just keep your eyes open. And I mean come come join with us. Come join us. Come join the conversation. See you next time. <laughs>